Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harrison. This is my podcast. Do you ever wonder about the future? Well, you're in luck. This season, we are studying future things revealed in the Word of God. I hope you're excited about that. Let's look forward to checking these things out. Let's fight the good fight of faith as we study future things. Open to um, Revelation chapter 15. Actually, 16. So, uh, in our study of eschatology and, and moving forward on, uh, on that, we're really close to uh, getting to the end of the tribulation period. Uh, and then we will pretty much end this study in the next couple of weeks, I would assume. And we'll move on to some other things. But uh, uh, since we've already looked in, at the future things of heavenly places and where we're at with that, uh, we did that. And now we're looking at the future of what's happening on the earth and, uh, and those things. So, we've been looking at future things. And so we've basically marched to the tribulation. We are, uh, we, uh, last time we, uh, we looked at Revelation 14, and we saw that Jesus Christ sticks his sickle in, and he reaps. Uh, he reaps the earth, and really that's the summation of most of the second half of the tribulation. All right, it really is. And uh, he steps in, and he, he does, he does his, his, his job, and it's judgment. It says in verse 15 of chapter 14, it says, Another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. This is the Son of Man. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for, the, for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. All right, and so then it's just very simple. And he sat, he sat on the cloud, thrust in the sickle in the earth, and the earth was reaped. All right, so it's just God does it, okay? When he does it, it's done appropriately. And then you see some other activity happening. It's towards the end of the tribulation. You have angels gathering. So there's going to be a great battle, right, at the second coming, right? All right, so if Christ comes back and there's nobody there, there's no battle, right? Okay, so so there, there are some preparation things that happen where God is, is making the way straight, making it, you know, clear so that man can come in their rebellion and meet him. He's just going to, he's going to make it so, all right? So in, in chapter, in verse 19, it talks about, in, well, um, yeah, verse 19, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth, okay? Gathered the vine of the earth, right? And, and, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And that's sort of, he's gathering them, and, and the casting is going to be after the second coming, but... At that point, and then verse twenty talks about this. The, and the wine press was trodden without the city; blood came out of the wine press, even to the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. That's really the Battle of Armageddon. That's what happens at that point, uh, which happens in the Valley of Megiddo, right? So that's sort of looking forward. But there's a gathering, All right? So there, uh, as we as, as we've looked, again, there are seven seals, right? Seven seals. That seventh seal is made up of the seventh seal is made up of seven trumpets, all right? And when, the, and when the sixth trumpet blows, you hit the midpoint of the tribulation. So the sixth trumpet blows, you hit the midpoint, all right? And then there's all this stuff that happens. Christ then uh, uh, reaps or whatever. And so you have this, you have uh, that seventh trumpet needs to blow, right? And so in... Um, in verse, I mean, maybe that's okay. So, uh, where's it at? I'm trying to find it. Do, 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 six. Oh, I gotta go back a little further. Chapter, chapter nine, verse thirteen. That's the sixth angel sounding, right? All right. Let me see if I can find the seventh angel. Let me go find it. Chapter eleven. Chapter 11. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ch- yeah. So, really, chapter eleven. Yeah, Where do you see that in chapter eleven? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, so, yeah, so verse 15. Seventh angel sounded, sorry about that, all right? And there were great voices. So that's right then at the middle, all right? So he blows the trumpet. And then you have this seventh trumpet consists of seven vials or seven other things. So when the seventh trumpet blows, so you hit the, you hit the middle at the, at the seventh, or at the, at the sixth. Uh, at the end of that, you hit, the, uh, you hit the middle or the seventh trumpet, I guess. I'll just do a seventh. Because it consists of the, really the second half of the tribulation. Right, so it's sort of in the middle. And that consists of seven vials. But they are, they are, they are concentrated. It's, it's that last grouping of information that God gives when, when that seventh trumpet blows is concentrated right at, towards the end of the tribulation. The last weeks, months 
of the tribulation. So if you go to Revelation chapter 16, uh, because when you know chapter 15, again, you sort of take a look up in the heaven, you see some preparation stuff. <clears throat> and I, again, we're not looking at the, studying the book of Revelation, we're just trying to look at what future things are happening, which has a lot of them. Um, but as you're looking, chapter 15, verse 7, it says, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of what? The wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever, right? And the temple was filled with the smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter in the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. It was such a, a righteous indignation, a righteous um, uh, wrath of God. And so, so here are these, 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 these vials. And the vials are sort of like, you know, people call them bowls, but like depending on how it's shaped, right? Sort of, you know, a vial can be like a test tube. You know, think of it like that or something large. But anyways, it's a container, all right? And, 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 it, and, it's, and so then, it, what, we'll start in verse 16, chapter 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God, what? Upon the earth, right? And so the first went, and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell what? A noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Maybe it's foot and mouth disease to the next level, right? Okay, okay. It's, it, it is. It's sort of like Job. You know Job? You know, the, you know when Job had that the covering, and it just was an agony. Except this is, this is a judgment of God, not an issue where God said, okay, Satan, you can touch him, Right? But you can't touch his life, right? I mean, there was a, there was a there was a behind the scenes going on. Well, this is clear. This is God bringing wrath. So everybody has the mark of the beast, all right. Now that'd be a pretty easy way to tell that a person's a believer, right? If they're not there doing it. But you know what? Everybody who would try to persecute them or hurt them is in agony, right? They're in agony, all right. This also, by the way, there, you know, if, uh, the scriptures talk all over you know, in the Old Testament about how God's going to gather Israel back into the land. All right. Well, during this period of time, that they're being held in prisons and captive, and you know, there's lots of you know Christians are in hiding. They'll give them an opportunity to travel. Okay. <laughs> they will. They'll be, they'll be able to move, and you're going to find that some of these things have to do with that. All right. Uh, that, that is, is they're making a way. Uh, it doesn't say how long it lasts, but it's uh, nasty, right? Okay. Uh, verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of what? A dead man. All right, so, okay. And what it says there, And every living soul died in the sea. All right? So there's nothing remaining. The blood of a dead man. Okay, so this is not the blood of a man. It's the blood of a dead man. So this is rancid, corrupting, you know, putrid type of stuff. So this is, this is nasty stuff. So um, probably, you know, filled with all kinds of disease and stuff. Verse 4. The third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of the waters, and they became what? Blood. Now you can imagine. So when Christ talks about that these days will be shortened, if all the fresh water was blood, how long could you survive? All right. N not long, right? So, this, so this, you, know, this, you know, this is sort of like, you know, when Moses turned the, you know, well, he didn't turn the water blood, but he pronounced a judgment. God turned the water to blood. Okay, that was a, it was a judgment, right? And look what it says there, verse 5. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another, angel, another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. The fourth angel, verse 8. The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with what? Fire. I just think about the eclipse we had the other day. You know, you look at it, you burn your eyeballs out, right? Okay, can you imagine the heat? What God does, he, he intensifies the sun, and, and it becomes hotter. Did you, did anybody go out during the eclipse? You were out during the, even, even though we're here in Pennsylvania, even during the, um, the when it was at its maximum, around 245, 248, did you notice there was a difference in intensity of the sun? I, I, I didn't notice it so much while it was going on until afterwards. So like, because I was in and out of the house with the kids and doing some stuff, and we got there, and I noticed it looked a little different, because I mean, I didn't have binoculars or the glasses. We were just, we were doing a little science experiments, okay, so, with the kids. And, um, but I noticed like about a 45 minutes after it hit pinnacle, as it was decreasing, you know, the sun was being exposed again. 
I uh, went out and it's like, I just felt the sun on my back. It was just, I mean, you, you could just, but during the eclipse, it was sort of like comfortable. You didn't feel the intensity. Um, God's gonna step up the intensity, all right? Uh, it's, uh, you know, so it says here, it says, verse nine, and men were scorched, what? With great heat. And what did they do? Praise God for, you know, they turned to him, right? No, and they blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. They repented not to give him glory. Now, how did they know that God had power over those plagues? Well, what did the angel say? He is the God of the earth, the sun, the sky, the heavens, and the waters and the seas. What, we did, what did you just have judged? All right. You know, you just had those things, you know, the rivers, the fountains, the waters. Okay, now, now you have the, 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 the sun, all right, and it just, you know, it gets, it's, you know, it's God, all right, that's what they're saying. Verse 10, it's sort of like the apostles when they were, uh, or disciples at the time, whatever, they were in the boat, and Christ walks out on the water, or actually calms the sea, and one of them says, like, you know, has power to calm, you know, the, you know who are you? You can, you know, you have power over nature. Well, you're witness. I mean, you know what it is. I'm, I'm God. That's what it means, all right? That's what they should have done. Verse 10, the fifth day to pour out his vow upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for what? Pain. Pain. So the seat of the beast, okay, where's, let's talk, and his kingdom, that's where his authority is at. So where is he at? Oh, he's, that's where he's from. Where is he at? He's in Jerusalem, all right? Now, the seat of the beast is Babylon, all right? But his kingdom is now reigning, he's, he's reigning in, in, in Israel. But Babylon is where his main, is, you know, you're correct and you're correct, right? It's both. But the issue is there's full of darkness, right? All right, did that ever happen before? Just in Egypt. Just in Egypt, right? But in the land of Goshen, what was going on? It was sunlight, right? Okay. Uh, again, this is, a, you know, God's gathering his children back. His children are coming back. They're able to come back through this because of the darkness. They are gnawing their tongues in pain. We're talking about there's, there's zero light, okay? Absolute darkness, all right? Again, verse 11, and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Verse 12, preparation again. And the, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water there was dried up. Why? The way of the kings of the east might be prepared. All right, so he's gonna. So all the kings are gonna bring their armies. So if you get, take a look at the great river Euphrates. Here's here's uh, the Mediterranean. Right, wow, that's pretty bad. Mediterranean. Israel somewhere in here, right? Right. River Euphrates is over here, right? So uh, he dries it up so the kings of the east can come, right? Right. Kings of the north can come too, but the kings of the so he's making sure that everybody who wants to come to the party can get there, right? Um, verse 13, and not only that, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, demons, uh, fault, and angels, working miracles which go forth in the, uh, in, unto the kings of the earth, unto the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So basically, Satan, the false prophet, and, and the beast, uh, Antichrist, uh, their spirit or whatever, their, their motivation starts gathering up, gathering up the armies. Satan knows what's coming, right? He knows what's coming, right? The men of the earth might be stupid, but it's all the kings now. So he's going out and convincing them they got to come, right? They got to come. Uh, they got to come to battle. There's something going to come to battle. Uh, verse 15 says, Behold, I come as a thief. It's talking about the Lord. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, what? Armageddon. So in Armageddon, the valley of Megiddo is in this zone right in there, right? Maybe a little lower. All right. Notice what verse 17 says. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, What? It's done. We're done. God has, God has completed uh, those, those, those judgments. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Uh, we had a, what, a Category 9 earthquake in, uh, right off the coast of Japan, right? Uh, took out reactors. It was a tsunami tidal wave that you know, did devastation. 
Um, there was a minor earthquake off the Philippines a few years earlier, and they had tsunamis come in and sweep up into the land. Uh, you know, these, these, these are, you know, it's, it's, it says that this earthquake has not ever been that lies with this. I mean, it basically says, it says that in verse 19 says, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance of her God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, right? So every island was basically washed over, right? And the mountains were not found, so they just sort of collapsed. Okay, this is a huge transformation. There fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, Every stone about the weight of a talent. So this is like the 120-pound hailstones. And blast, men blasphemed God because of the blanket, plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was what? Exceedingly great. So everything's collapsing around you, so you run out in the streets. <laughs> and then here comes stuff from heaven, right? Plowing you down again. So it's like it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's judgment. Chapter 17 and 18 are, are um, a... Um, Again, uh, uh, an explanation of Babylon, really. Spiritual Babylon, chapter 17, and what uh, we already looked at that sort of, is sort of the first half tribulation. And then um, physical Babylon, chapter 18. When Babylon is destroyed, uh, it's destroyed in a day. It's a, it's, it's, it is the seat of the beast, all right? Uh, and it is, a, you know, it, it, it's, he's made it into an amazing city. It's, been, it's, it's the world hub, is effectively what it is at that time. Can't buy or sell, right? That's the mark of the beast, and everybody's coming to worship there. It's like the Mecca of the world. And so it's destroyed in a day, right? Uh, in chapter 19, you have uh, basically a lot of uh, singing and rejoicing in the heavenly places, all right? And uh, uh, you have the marriage supper of the Lamb being talked about and uh, being gathered together, dealing with Israel, right? Um, but so, well, I'll just, um, well, and verse 11 becomes the next event, all right? So after those judgments, okay, there's a little bit of time. I don't know how much time. It sort of like goes quiet for a little bit, okay? Why? Well, because there's gathering still happening. By the way, the, you know, Antichrist is still running around, right? Apparently he still has communication skills, right? And so why are they gathering him? Because he's gathering because he, he knows something's happening, right? By the way, there's been, there's been some visions. I didn't, I didn't talk about those where there's been... Um, uh, heaven's been open. They've seen the throne of God. Okay, there's a couple times that happens in the middle of the tribulation, a little later on, and what Antichrist is going is like, that's the one. He's coming. He's going to do us harm. Right? Get ready for the alien invasion. Whatever. How everyone's going to do it here? Something's going to happen here, right? And and so he's gathering these armies together, uh, and uh, to um, for, for this battle, right? So in verse 11, okay, uh, you have then the second coming, all right? And we're going to talk a lot about that a little later, uh, or, or next time. Yeah, we got, we got a little bit of time, but a, a second coming, and it's Christ coming. And what I want to just share with you, the second coming is not a one-moment event. It's a multiple-day experience, all right? All right, so the second coming is not him just coming out of heaven and plopping down, you know, on the Mount of Olives and walking into the city of Jerusalem, right? It's all about um, uh, God, when Christ comes back, it comes back, there's still judgment going on, right? I mean, there are sinners in the land, okay? There are, there are problems in the land. I mean, after the tribulation, during the millennium, there are individuals that are, that, well, there's a seven-year, you got a seven-year job if you want one. No, you're not going to get it, but if it, after tribulation, you're hanging out. If you want, there's a seven-year job that you can get, where what you do is you go out and you bury bodies, okay? That's, that's your job. You go out, you, find, you bury bodies. So you go throughout the land, and the land that Christ deals with is like this. It's much larger than the second coming. And, and so, like, if, you're just, if you don't have that job, and you happen to be traveling, and your travels through the land, and you see some bones, you call 1-800-GO-DIG, or something like that, and, and this just, you know, one of these Israelites will come and they'll do it the proper way. And they'll, they'll bury the bodies the right, right way. Because at the second coming, there is a purging of the land, all right? There's purging of the land. And I'm gonna, we're going to read a lot of verses for you about that. But, but here, here's the, sum, you know, the, the portion of it. So in verse 11 of Revelation 19, here's the second coming from here's the, the first part of it. So, and I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge, and what? 
make war. Okay, so it's not just this peaceful sort of thing. There's problems still there, right? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many, uh, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name writ which that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And not that's his blood, all right? That's the, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that blood's not his. He shed his blood at the, on Calvary, right? And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed upon him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, what? White, white and clean. So who's doing the judgment? Christ is doing the judgment, right? They're just, they're the entourage behind, right? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fiercest of the wrath of God, Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. You don't want to come to this supper, all right? Okay? that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, right? And then, you know, so that's that, you see that part, and then, but you don't see any other result there. It's just done here in this trivial, in the, in the, in the book of Revelation. Um, well, maybe I can go a little further here, but... The beast was taken, the false prophet, they're captured, they're cast into the lake of fire. Verse 21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon that horse, which, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Now, that, it's sort of hard to tell, but there's a war, right? There's a battle, right? All right, so I'm going to, uh, it, it'll be next time, I think. So I'm going to take you through this path, what he does. The book of Amos sort of lays it out pretty clearly, what's happening. All right, but what he, I'll just sort of summary. He comes and he shows up north. He shows up somewhere in here first, all right? So when he comes out of heaven on his horse, he shows up here. He heads down the coast. He sweeps through this portion. He comes back up. His army is split in two portions. There's the River Jordan in here, all right? And one part comes this direction. One part this comes direction. They gather together right outside Jerusalem. But before they go to Jerusalem, where he goes into Jerusalem, he goes back north, all right? And he goes back north to devour the Megiddo. So what has happened is that when he shows up, okay, it shows up so everybody says, oh, there he is. So Antichrist and all the kings of the east and all the kings of all the rest of the kings, they've been gathering their, their troops and everything together. They've been marching, and they're going to go to where the intel says he's at. Intel says he's here. That's where he showed up, right? So they come to the north. Christ sweeps through the land, purifies the land, then all the armies are here, ready to get battle, and he goes up and meets them. All right, that takes about 30 days, about 30 days of time, approximately. How do you know that? Well, the book of Daniel has some information about that. All right, so we'll look at that, anyways. It's probably it's not a it's it's less than 30 days for the whole thing, but after 30 days, that's dealt with. He's sitting on the throne. 30 days later. All right, so let me uh, just uh, go to Zechariah 14, just uh, and we'll. Uh, end with this probably, right, Marsha? All right. Okay. She's my, well, my wife's not here. She's my timekeeper. All right. Huh. Verse 8, Zechariah 13. Did I tell you 14? Zechariah 13, verse 8. So in, in, in verse 8, you have this summary. It says, And it shall come to pass... That in, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. That's the secondary. I will bring the third part through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, will try them as gold is tried, shall, and, shall, and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and, and they shall say what? The Lord is my God. So in all the land, two parts therein shall die. Now, when you read the Gospels, like Matthew 25, 25 talks about, you know, there's two people at the well, one shall be taken, and two people in the field, one shall be taken. That's this. And the person that's taken is taken in judgment. So there's two people standing there, and one's a believer, and one's not. Boom, the one that's not is taken, destroyed, killed. Look what it says in verse, you know, behold, and then in verse four, chapter 14, verse 1, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. So that's what's going on. So, you know, Antichrist is bringing his, these nations. We're going to just destroy it, right? But then, you know, and then they see what's going on. They go to Valley Megiddo. 
Uh, the city shall be taken, and the house is rifled, and the ribbon ravished, and half the city shall go into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, right? So, so he comes, they take, the, uh, they take Jerusalem. Uh, he's in Jerusalem when Christ comes back, all right? That's where he's at. And then you know, Christ is going to go come and take battle, and he's going he's gonna to put his feet on the Mount of Olives. But that's where he gets off the horse, and then he heads into the city, all right. So before he gets off his horse, though, he purifies the land. And we're going to look at a number of Old Testament verses that talk about that pretty clearly. So we'll end with that uh, today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord, where you can be. And we ask, Lord, that through our lives today you, that you'll be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for just the, uh, the privilege it is to open your word and to study it. Uh, we pray, Lord, that... Um, that as, this, uh, as your word goes into our hearts, Lord, it's not just to make us smart or brighter and know more, but that, Lord, that we might know you more. That, Lord, that you might become more and more real in our lives, that our faith might be stronger, that we might be able to serve you, Lord, with, with our life and to worship you, Lord, with the details of our days. We praise you, Lord, for this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, Transformative Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith and God's best to you.